there was occasional firing at the perimeter because crowds tried to breach uh, the airport. A couple of times there were warnings of attacks, so everybody put on the body armor and helmets and take cover. And I spent almost five years uh, as our bureau chief uh, in Kabul. The Italian embassy had arranged a repatriation flight. And the initial idea was that there would be a meeting at the airport gate where they would direct you in and then you go there. But the airport was already surrounded by thousands and thousands of people and the road to the airport was no longer passable. So they had to fly everyone they could by helicopter from the, from the American embassy compound, which is next door to the Italian one. There was no food. I was just on my phone writing. And luckily I managed to find a, uh, an outlet uh, for power to charge up my phone. Later in the day, and when crowds got even bigger and rowdier and, and the US Marines you know, started to shoot in the air. Marine Corps Quick Reaction Force was called in to deal with the situation of you know, hundreds of Afghan civilians uh, trying to board an idling uh, C-17 plane that was on the tarmac. And the plane actually took off with about 600 people in there packed like sardines. So, uh, the military airport doesn't have any of the normal facilities. You don't have the sort of the boarding vehicles or the ramps. So uh, there is this emergency ladder that comes from the aircraft itself. And uh, you have to climb up, which is uh, for people uh, that have strollers for babies was quite difficult. We were waiting, uh, waiting uh, because a lot of the Afghan staff, a lot of the other Italians, uh, were not able to make it to the airport. They were stranded outside, they were stranded in the city, the checkpoints were closed, and, and a lot of people didn't make it. 